going to Elise McGee, who made her first start at setter in over two years last night. So that'll be important to watch. Meanwhile, there's Alyssa Nyer off a little bit of rhythm with Ricky Williams. And a deflection gives the first kill of the night. Upset last night, a long, thrilling five-setter on the road in College Park. Maryland Terrapins were excellent, stout defensively, held Minnesota hitting under 200. And Kinkilla misfires on her first swing. Yeah, the Scarlet Knights last night as the game went on played very clean volleyball through that third set to be able to get the victory there. Kinkilla missing wide left. And we said Minnesota hit under 200. They only hit 124, so the Maryland Terrapins defense came to play. Kinkilla's got her first kill of the night. And there is the redshirt sophomore from Melbourne, Australia. She's already all over the record book for Rutgers, all in the top 10 in kills per set, attack percentage, and this year, she's having her best season. She's coming up on 200 kills, and again, Ohio State did a great job with her last night, and she was still able to finish with eight kills. Yeah, we talked about it in the open, trying to get her involved. Two big hits, first three chances, and there converts. That one hits the tape and drops in for an ace. It's the freshman, Kenzie Deerstad, with her third ace of the year. Hey, sometimes the ball just bounces your way. Kenzie Deerstad there, a little short on it, got the tips of the fingers a little too much on that ball, spun down, clipped the net, went over. So Rutgers out to an early 3-1 lead, and that time the ball bounces the other way. <laughs> That's how it goes sometimes. Can't expect luck to be on your side 100% of the time. All-time series, Minnesota leads it 10-2. And Eddie, you mentioned it last night, the first loss of the season to an unranked team for Minnesota. They had played a gauntlet of an early season schedule. Early action for the freshman, Anna Hartman. That joust at the net. Bump set that time for Murr. And now a bump set from the opposite libero, Chitty. Nyer to Kinkilla, yes! Said it was gonna be critical to get her off to an early start, and she's having just that. Yeah, Kinkilla's been great to start. Ricky Williams there helping set things up as well and keep the play alive. She had a big performance last night against Ohio State, and then Kinkilla there to finish things off. Long serve from Chitty. First look at Landfair. Chitty very involved early on. Here's Kinkilla again, goes with the changeup. A nice dig that time. Another chance, Kinkilla goes cross court, hit the tape and goes wide. Yeah, we saw Elise McGee getting involved there, of course, getting the start at setter. Hadn't started in the position in multiple years. Transfer over from Kansas, getting the opportunity last night with Shaftmaster out, getting the chance again, and that dig to keep the play alive, ultimately leading to the Minnesota point. And we spoke to head coach Keegan Cook, who we'll talk a, a little bit more in depth about him in his first season, but he said he was very impressed with how Elise McGee stepped into a really critical spot quarterbacking this offense as the redshirt senior Tina Gurkovic has a kill, the Belgrade Serbia native. And that's what makes her so dangerous. Not the best position. She cocks the arm back a little further to be able to get to the ball and still able to place it down for the kill. We have more on Lisa McGee, 39 assists last night to go with 14 digs. So she should be a little bit more comfortable tonight. Big swing, big miss that time from McKenna Wooker. So Minnesota a little bit frazzled here in the early going. Rutgers defense holding their own. Golden Gophers coming into this one, six and seven on the year, two and three in Big Ten play. So they would love to get back to 500 both overall and in the conference standings. Error in the buildup against Rutgers. And another storyline tonight, Pat, both these teams playing back-to-backs. And that's not necessarily uncommon in volleyball. It happens. But when you're Minnesota and you just played a five-set battle that was grueling with Maryland last night, uh, Caitlin Schweighoffer was talking about how probably got back really late, quick turnaround. It's going to be difficult. Yeah, three-hour bus ride from College Park to Piscataway. That's if you're uh, maybe speeding a little bit. <laughs> Walker again. Nothing doing right now for Minnesota. Gurkovich, that's money. That's the slide. She has 
tried to perfect that as much as possible, and she just gives this offense another element when you can deploy her all over the floor. Yeah, great setup. We see Nayer kind of go over the head, over the shoulder, feeds to Grkovic, and she finishes the job. Tina had nine kills to go with four blocks last night against Ohio State. 33 kills and 11 blocks in her last three matches, so she is heating up at the right time. Elise McGee goes for the dump set. And then Gurkovich gets blocked. Walker was there. Nair pushes it wide. First chance for Taylor Humphrey, but it comes back. It's another block, and it's Erica Davis, this time on the other pin, teaming up with Lydia Grote. Yeah, these last two points, looks like the Golden Grove Gophers have started to regroup. They've done a great job kind of creating traffic right near the net, not giving the Scarlet Knights any lanes to put any kills together. And both of these teams right in the middle of the pack in the Big Ten in blocks per set. Gerkovic goes long for the corner, and it gets a kill. A little bit of miscommunication from Minnesota, and Gerkovic off to a great start with three kills. Yeah, the combination of Kinkilla and Gerkovic through these first 14 points of the match, they have looked great. Landfair was a bit out of position and allowed Rutgers to walk away with the point. These two teams played late last season in November here inside Jersey Mike's Arena. It was a comprehensive 3-0 win for Minnesota as Grote comes up short. And in that match, although Minnesota did dominate, Christina Gurkovic had 11 kills. As you see Grote coming up short, so See if Caitlin Schweighofer wants to get her senior very involved in the offense again tonight. Another chance there for Grote, nothing doing. Humphrey, and they're going after Landfair on the back row and it's working out. So Taylor Humphrey getting involved there, 13 kills last night, her best performance of the season. And her first real chance there delivering. And like you said, Rutgers really targeting the reigning Big Ten Player of the Year early on, and it is working out. Here's Gurkovic, who has taken her serving to another level in her senior season. This time, palm down for the kill. There is Lydia Grote, and the senior from Burbank, California, keeps on swinging. Minnesota back within three. Yeah, Lydia Grote has been very active on the other side. That time didn't have to do very much with it. Saw a few Scarlet Knights playing pretty far back. Tried to find that little gap between the front and the middle lines and got it done. Grote was easily the best performer in that five set loss last night. 18 kills and a rejection that time. Landfair combining with Erica Davis. That's the third block already for the Golden Gophers. And that is what Taylor Landfair's specialty is when you're six foot five. You can make your presence felt. No opportunity for Ricky Williams. And the serve that goes into the net. Very defensive battle right now. Minnesota hitting in the negative. Rutgers under 100. Here's Nyer to serve, the 50-year senior. Transferred in before last season from Arkansas Little Rock. And between the two schools, she's got over 2,500 career assists. And a solo rejection in the middle. Ricky Williams saying, not up in here. Ricky Williams, presence felt, great play, picking up right where she left off last night. Two hands, perfection. And Minnesota wanted that play. They got Erica Davis one-on-one -on -one with Williams, but boy, has she been instrumental in her first season Barely played in two years at Penn State. Asked Caitlin Schweighoffer, well, what has she added to the, this team? And she said, well, she just fits great in our culture. She steps up in multiple ways. She has become an immediate leader. And boy, she has not shot away from the spotlight. Here's Murr. Another big transfer came over from Ohio State. And there is Taylor Humphrey getting it going on the other side of the pin. So Rutgers spreading the wealth around here on offense. Yeah, we saw Kinkilla and Gurkovich making the big plays early. Taylor Humphrey with a couple of points here, getting an active. We just saw Ricky Williams, the big block of the net. So everybody getting involved in the Scarlet Knights, off to a fantastic start in front of the home fans. And I think what's most impressive about Humphrey is the last three matches, she's hit well over 200, which has not been the case for her most of her career. Great dig from Chitty. She had 20 of them last night. 
Hartman takes the second chance. Murr with the dig. Here's Landfair. Another chance for the reigning Big Ten Player of the Year. And you can only give her so many opportunities before she's going to put it down. Yeah, really strong resurgence there on that rally from Rutgers. Started with that incredible dig from Chitty. But after a while, there's only so much you can do when you're facing off with the reigning Big Ten Player of the Year. And a first team All-American. And Eddie talked about a bit of a slow start for her this year. Only nine kills last night as Maryland did a great job with her. And there is the freshman, Anna Hartman, who has just gotten more and more playing time, and she's proven why. Yeah, the freshman for this team, this group has been great between Deerstad and Hartman. Those two have been really impressive this season, and Hartman with a nice play. Hartman before last night did not have a kill since September 8th against Morgan State. She had four of them and played a pretty big role in that third set win for Rutgers. So. Caitlin Schweighoffer throwing her freshman right back into the fire tonight. Here's Landfair to serve. You saw a stat that came up before, 20 aces. It's fifth in the Big Ten. Gerkovic with a hammer fist right down the middle. Gerkovic comes right off the bench and immediately steps up and sends both teams to the benches. Tina has been electric to start here for RU. Due to time constraints, we now move ahead in the action. Set. Minnesota hitting just 071. So here's what's at stake. Rutgers first set win against a ranked opponent in almost two years last night. Now they got a chance to do it on back-to-back -back nights. That time, Landfair goes right back to work and goes down the line. Yeah, right there, Nyer, awkward place. Really hard to try to dig that one out, set it up for a teammate. That's going to fly long. Minnesota just about double the amount of service errors as aces. That's right around the average mark. So that one coming at a wrong time. McGee. And a big left hand that time from Lauren Crow, the six foot four redshirt sophomore from Egan, Minnesota. Showing off the power. Yeah, Lauren Crow right there, someone with only 13 kills coming into this match all season. You wouldn't think that when you see a shot like that, one of the hardest hit balls we've seen of this entire set. And Crowell only played one set last night, but again, tired legs, you gotta figure, using your bench, gonna be key tonight for Keegan Cook. Quick one, Ricky Williams, money. Ricky Williams slick with it there. Set up, perfect from Nyer, and Williams with the right hand punishes. Ricky had nine kills, seven blocks, five digs last night. Stuffed the stat sheet. And that time, Minnesota can't even get it over. Rutgers two points away from claiming the opening set and putting the Golden Gophers on an early upset alert. In the Big Ten, Caitlin Schweighoffer in her fourth season talking about taking those big building block steps winning sets against ranked teams, winning a match against a ranked team as Landfair gets a kill out of the break. Caitlin Schweighoffer, who orchestrated a turnaround at LaSalle before she came to Rutgers, they were 1-31 the year before she got there. She ended up being the 2018 A-10 Coach of the Year, and that was a big reason why Rutgers and Pat Hobbs chose her to be the head coach coming here right before the pandemic hit. That serve goes long. And here we are four years later, and the impact that Caitlin Schweighoffer has had on this program, I don't, I don't think it could be understated. It really can't, and we've talked about with this team how many different players have been involved. Schweighoffer told us before the game, doesn't want to be a one-trick pony kind of deal. Let's have a lot of different players involved in the big plays. Six set points for Rutgers. Here's Wooker down the line, and that one is in. 
That was close. Looked like she may have just curved it in. Yeah, it looks like she did. That was a nice piece of hitting. All it has to do is catch a any part of that line. And it did, but now Rutgers still with five set points, and now they get a chance to do it on offense. Nyer to Gurkovich. Block back. Erica Davis teams up with Wooker. And this is what makes the Gophers so dangerous and why at one point this season they were top five in the country. The size they have on that front line, Davis is there, Wooker, and of course, Landfair. Another serve from Zainet Palabiak. Another chance for RU. Here's Hartman. And that one's misfired. No, that's off a deflection. And the Scarlet Knights, looking for an upset tonight. They've got the first set over Minnesota, 25-20. How about that for Rutgers? And like you said, two Rutgers averages a tick over 12 kills per set. So you mentioned it there, Eddie. 15 in that opening frame. Minnesota just couldn't handle them. Back set to Kinkilla to start the second. Landfair coming from the back row. And now there's Humphrey. And that's, you're seeing that correctly as there's a big block from Rutgers, Kinkilla and Ricky Williams. Rutgers has been so effective in those situations where they stack two for a block. That time it was Kinkilla and Ricky Williams together making the big time play and Rutgers comes out of the gates in the second step looking much like they did in the first. And what I was alluding to in terms of you're seeing that correctly, Melanie Schaffmaster, the six foot three senior who's battling through an illness. We did not think she would play tonight. Here she is out on the floor battling through an illness. Uh, does that say that the panic button is going off right now for Keegan Cook, that he's got his starting setter out there? I'd say that's a, as much of a signal as ever. I know you're gonna try to go deep to that bench, but when you got someone who's dealing with an illness and missed a game just last night, they're gonna bring her in, down one set already. I think that's panic button has been pushed. Well, they need this offense to step up. And there is Shaftmaster, sets it, and that's a kill for Lydia Grote. Yeah, Lydia Grote, not too shabby tonight. That's her third kill right there. Nice set, Shaftmaster right into the game, making a statement, set up. And Grote does the rest. Joust, oh, forget that. That's not a joust. That's a one-sided affair at the net. Erica Davis with a monster right hand. Yeah, that's all about pacing. We saw Rutgers go with the little bump action on the dig that went over the net, and it allowed Minnesota to be in the perfect place to set up a kill. So the Scarlet Knights probably should have had an extra hit on their side, try to slow things down. Minnesota takes advantage. Goes up 3-1. Nyer back to Williams. Shaftmaster the dig. Rutgers keeps it alive. Harmon goes for the line and she hits it. The accuracy by Anna Hartman off the charts tonight. It's a fifth kill for her and Hartman. I'd say at least three of them have towed that line. Right there just barely sneaks it in and Hartman is in her element. The freshman from Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Swing and a miss from Davis. Landfair has to play a free ball, and Kinkilla takes advantage. Four kills for Alyssa Kinkilla. Yeah, big time mistake from Erica Davis as she missed. Minnesota was able to get it over the net, but not at the angle that they wanted, and it set up an opportunity for Kinkilla. Alyssa now 489 kills for her career. Here's Landfair. Hartman again sneaks it through. So that's already a career high for Anna Hartman. Six kills. Big bump set. Landfair takes it out of the air and hammers it down. So that's obviously the number one key right now for Minnesota is get the first team All-American, the reigning Big Ten player of the year, back in her element. 
And Lanfair only hitting 182 in the match before that. Jumps up to 273 there with her fourth kill. Rutgers has done a really good job in terms of trying to slow her down. Davis bumps it right into Rutgers territory and Hartman and Gerkovich push it right back over. Again, Minnesota playing a bit too slow right there and it slowly goes over the net and sets up a prime chance for Rutgers for the quick little dump of denial. And that's gonna be Hartman's. Rutgers keeps it alive with a couple of low digs. Chitty gets that dig, joust at the net, still going. Landfair, too long. No, again, there was a deflection. Boy, to the naked eye, some of these deflections, Eddie. <laughs> Maybe I need a new pair of uh, specs. I'm not picking up on them. Hey, I, I don't wear glasses, but I, I, I don't really see these deflections either. It's really, really close. Nair did a good job, good awareness to not get over the net and have a violation, but Minnesota, they're able to draw the deflection and the Gophers get a much needed point. Five apiece here in the second frame. Good serve from Minnesota, but Hartman deposits it in no man's land. Eight kills already for Anna Hartman. This is her coming out party. It's baffling. She had 26 kills on the season entering last night's game against Maryland. She's got 12 in the last 25 hours. Tremendous stuff for the freshman who decided to come to Rutgers. Part of the reason was why she has family close by in the area. So she said New Jersey is going to be an exciting experience. And that's an exciting experience for Becca Williams, who registers an ace. Yeah, Williams have been quiet in this game before that. And one of the best servers on this team coming through. 15 aces on the season. She had three of them back on Sunday and a loss to Michigan State, two of them last night. And that time, coming up short, Phoebe Awalea. And for the moment, Minnesota has gone back to Elise McGee at the setter spot. So Phoebe Awalea, the senior from Marietta, Georgia, checks back out. But it has not been an efficient night so far for the Golden Gophers, hitting just 182 on the match. That time Crow tried to go soft with the left. Joust at the net, and it's won by Minnesota. And that time, it's Kalissa Minity, the freshman from Kansas City. Yeah, that's a situation where the Scarlet Knights just had one too many players playing up. Chitty, a little out of position. Wasn't able to get it. And a block, almost kept alive. Oh, Minnesota throwing hands to the net right now. They're trying to lean on their defense. And an error. Rutgers wearing them down. Kinkella will get credit for that. Oh, man, what a job by the Scarlet Knights right there. Minnesota standing strong on that front line, but Rutgers keeps going and going and eventually capitalized on a Minnesota mistake. Minnesota head coach Keegan Cook has used plenty of rotations already. 13 players have already entered the match. They know how important keeping those legs fresh is going to be tonight. And there is a kill from Wooker, her fourth. Yeah, Wooker has looked great tonight. Sophomore, Brookfield, Wisconsin. There from that left side, attacks the stack of blockers with Nyer and Ricky Williams. A lot of folks in Minneapolis expecting a big breakout year from McKenna Wooker this season, as that one's right in the corner from Humphrey. Yeah, Taylor Humphrey, perfect placement there. Notice Minnesota was shifted a little too closely to their bench side of the court and dropped it in, back left corner. Short through the middle from Davis. 
Now Kinkilla. McGee. Chitty for Humphrey. Walker again. Kept alive by Rutgers. What a one-handed dig from Madison Chitty. Walker goes right back at her and she digs it straight up into the air. Couple of defensive gems alone in this rally. Williams, is it in? No, it's wide. Boy, what a point that was. Oh man, what a rally. And Madison Chitty, I believe that was three digs right there from her to keep that alive, kept on going. Uh, not too shabby either from Minnesota and Kylie Murr. Again, we've talked about her coming into play, leading the conference in digs. And ultimately a miss hit from the Scarlet Knights. And the Golden Gophers come away with a very tough point. Yeah, Murr, first team all Big Ten last year. Honorable mention, All-American. Meanwhile, Kinkilla going back to work on that far pin. And this is where Rutgers has just been so strong this season, it's the, this game, because they have just bounced back whenever they have a mistake, not really letting Minnesota build up any sort of momentum. Gophers had a chance where they got a few points in a row at the end of the first set, but besides that, Scarlet Knights have been consistent. Shaftmaster back into the match, setting for the Golden Gophers as they try to get their offense going. That one misses. So Minnesota really wanted to try to capitalize on this trip to the east. That serve goes wide. Fourth service arrow of the match for Minnesota. So make it 12-9 Rutgers. Here's Chitty, who's already up to eight digs tonight. Shaftmaster has to tip it back, and she touched the net. Boy, this Golden Gophers offense just has not gotten in rhythm all match so far. Yeah, they really haven't. And Shaftmaster, we talked about it battling out there. Just haven't really seen her moving that much, trying to set up her teammates, but hasn't brought all that much to the table yet. Wooker over to Landfair. Kinkilla gets it through. Seven kills and seven digs for the Aussie. Timeout, Minnesota. How about Alyssa Kinkilla, leader on this Rutgers team in points, leader on this team in kills this season. Seven kills on the night, second on the team, hitting just under 400, seven digs too. So Minnesota in some trouble. Here's Kinkilla again. Went after Shaftmaster who got the dig. Grout. And an error in the buildup, it'll go to Minnesota. Rutgers Sports Information Director for the women's volleyball team, Kim Zivkovich, letting us know last time Rutgers won two sets against a top 25 opponent. Got to go back to the COVID season, spring of 2021, when they lost a five-setter to number 19 Ohio State. That was February of 2021. Pancake dig, Chefmaster putting the body on the line, and then Grote with the kill. And that point right there could be a big fulcrum point in this set. And now Keegan Cook looking great to bring Shaftmaster into that game. What a dig and what a finish on the play by Grote. Minnesota looking to flip the momentum somehow, some way. Points like that will help you do it. Kinkilla goes right back to work though with a lightning bolt of a right hand. What a shot by Kinkilla to the back row and just absolutely demolishes that ball. Ty Hartman for the team lead with eight kills. By the way, we told you the last time Rutgers took two sets off a ranked team. They have never beat a top 25 program. That one's out from Landfair. And all these deflections keep happening on the opposite side of the court too, he's on the far a, side from the bench. He's got an eagle eye. If he, uh, Whenever his coaching career is done, he might have a future in optometry. <laughs> now Caitlin Tryoffer wants to make sure she's got her rotation in order. Deerstad and Chitty, the two defensive specialists on the floor right now for the Scarlet Knights. 
Here's McGee to serve. Chance for Hartman. Freshman going for the line again. That one just missed. That's been that area that Hartman keeps attacking, that far side line, and that time just misses wide. So now Caitlin Schreihofer is going to try her luck with the challenges. Still a perfect night in terms of errors. Nine kills, no errors, a career high nine kills. For the that one hits the tape, nearly drops down. Good reactions from McGee. Crowell fires that one a mile long. Well, Minnesota is certainly not playing their A game right now, but give credit to the Scarlet Knights. They are hitting over 300, and they have taken this opportunity presented to them, and they have ran with it so far. McGee has to sprint just to get that one up. Crowell goes for the changeup. Now Nyer goes for the dump set kill and flushes it home. That was nice from Nyer. Perfect place to do it. It was the second ever Big Ten sweep in Rutgers program history. And they are in good position right now as Williams hits the net. Won the first set, 18-13 lead here in the second. Eddie, what can Minnesota do to get themselves back in it? Well, it's very reminiscent to that first set. We saw Rutgers open up a gap. Minnesota did keep a close storm back with some late points, but got to make some headway now. And a foot fault, or a receiving fault, I should say, against Rutgers. They were out of system, out of formation. And that is something that Rutgers cannot be doing on their side. Scarlet Knights with this lead. Got to be playing clean volleyball. And nearly an ace. Nyer's got to fly in there to bump it over. Free ball. Chance for the Golden Gophers to get three in a row. And they do. Golden Gophers, they'd be in danger of not only falling out, out of the top 25, but perhaps then you know, you're talking about bubble territory in the NCAA tournament. But Landfair comes out with a huge ace. Yeah, the Golden Gophers now, after it was 18-12, four straight points really starting to look more in sync, and Landfair has been getting increasingly more involved as the game's gone on. Another dart of a serve that knocks Chitty over, but then Gurkovich pulverizes that one. Yeah, that's how you shift momentum if you're Rutgers and get it back on your side. Gurkovich there with a strong hammer finish. Mentioned she had 11 kills in the loss last year. Back set, Crowell. Going to Ricky Williams now, and it's the same result. It's another big kill. Yeah, Ricky Williams has been quiet tonight compared to what we saw from her last night against the Buckeyes of Ohio State, but they are ranging to her right, moving towards the out of bounds line and lines it up and gets it down for the point. 100 kills on the season now for the first year Scarlet Knight. Rutgers the first to 20 again. Wooker goes right down the line. Perfect placement. That's one of her favorite shots. Yeah, it's been a great night here for McKenna Wooker, the sophomore from Brookfield, Wisconsin, coming through there with her seventh kill, leading the Gophers. Talked about it before, Wooker expected to have, take a huge next step this season. She was the number one overall recruit in the class of 2022. Had a very, very solid freshman campaign and now expected to compete to find herself on the all Big Ten list this year. Williams again, that one's blocked. Wooker combining with Erica Davis. Minnesota back within two. Yeah, this is clearly a set now that is going to come right down to those final points. And the Scarlet Knights, while they've had some nice moments here in the second set, Minnesota looking more composed. And Wooker's been excellent. Caitlin Schreihofer getting down on one knee to tell her team to stay composed. This is a huge moment right now for the red and white. And it's Williams who delivers her third of the match. 
Back and forth we go. Such a momentous stage of this match. Rutgers trying to stake themselves to a 2-0 lead. McGee, Davis. Nyer takes control. Humphrey. On a dig from Murr, and then Williams hammers it. Three kills in a row for Ricky Williams. Williams taking full advantage of the backup setter being in, and McGee. It allowed Minnesota to have to bring up Davis towards the center, and Williams comes through. Good serve. Rutgers right back on offense. Here's Kinkilla. Nice dig from McGee. Uh, they get another free ball. Minnesota has had a lot of trouble staying in system. Crowell. McGee squares it up for Wooker. Killa had to contort back to just to find that one. Longest rally of the set, and it's an important one. Humphrey, did she get the corner? No, just missed. Yeah, Both teams now trying to catch their breaths. Humphrey was close there, and yeah, this is really a time to recollect and regather. That was just for one point, much more important ones to come. Both teams staying alive. Great plays, and Humphrey just misses past that back line. And Caitlin Schweighofer said before the match, we wouldn't mind finding ourselves in a bunch of long rallies. If you're Minnesota, a five-setter last night in College Park, having to take a long bus ride here to Piscataway today. Uh, one of the last things they can afford is to go down 2-0. Walker on the second effort, drives it through, her seventh kill. McKenna Walker putting the Gophers on her back here in this second set has just been dominant for them, especially over these last 10 to 15 points. Here's Melanie Shaftmaster, who again is battling through an illness, did not play last night. We didn't think she was going to play tonight, and she hits that one into the net. Service errors have come at the wrong times tonight for the Golden Gophers. Rutgers two points away from a 2-0 lead. Here's Hartman, and the freshman continues her career night. 10 kills to lead everybody. And the freshman from Tennessee is putting herself on the map. When you need a point in the biggest way possible, go to the player who is on an absolute tear, Hartman, putting Rutgers in a set point. Four of them to be exact. Shaftmaster had to avoid the net, which she did, and now Rutgers has a chance. Kinkella missed it wide, tried to slice it down the line. Rutgers still hitting over 300 on the match and out hitting Minnesota in this set, 341 to 200. It has been one of the most efficient matches of the entire season for Rutgers, let alone in Big Ten play. And they're doing it against the number 16 team in the country. Can the Golden Gophers dig themselves out of a deep, deep hole? Skyler Gray to serve. Who does Rutgers go to? Kinkilla. And it's blocked back. Landfair and Davis putting up a wall. Yeah, that's what you got to do in that situation. You know Rutgers is going for the kill to win the set. And Landfair right there with Davis combining for this one. Davis coming over, helping out Landfair, but that was all Taylor. So we'll stay right here with you. Nothing quite like playing here inside Jersey Mike's Arena. She convinced the athletic department to move most of the schedule for the entirety of the year, last year and this season here to Jersey Mike's Arena. They are a point away from a 2-0 lead. 
Nyer goes to Ricky Williams along the tape and wide. Rutgers wins the set. Ricky Williams with her fifth kill. Through the first two sets, it's been all scarlet. Here's Alyssa Nyer to serve. Shaftmaster over to Landfair. And there you go. There is plan number one. Get the reigning All-American and Big Ten Player of the Year going. Yeah, that is really textbook. Taylor Landfair getting it right over the blockers and finding a corner bottom left to get it. Kinkilla. Block back. That one never really stood a chance. Kalissa Minity leading the charge there with Landfair. And this is the real challenge now for Rutgers. You're up two sets to nothing. Minnesota's hungry. How do you keep the foot on the pedal when you've got this little bit of breathing room? Humphrey blocked again. Minnesota had three blocks in the first set. They've already got two here in the third set. That time it was Lydia Grote leading the way. And Kalissa Minity, the freshman again. Kylie Murr, reigning Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year when she was at Ohio State. Shaftmaster to Grote. Williams over the top and down. Already has an ace tonight. Landfair gets it through. We talked about the slow start she got off to. When you play, what was it, six ranked teams in non-conference action, that has the chance of happening, but she hit just 123 in eight non-conference games. Since conference play has begun, she's hitting over 350. She's finding her form. That serve flies long, but Eddie, for a player last year in Taylor Landfair, who was a first team All-American and Big Ten Player of the Year, she had almost 500 kills. And so far, this has... I've never seen that. <laughs> I've never seen four challenges won in one match, and I've certainly never seen four for four. And hey, when you're playing from behind, you need these points. He might be the MVP. Naya races over. Here's Hartman. Landfair, big right hand. Taylor's up to nine now, and she's hitting well over 450. These are the types of performances the Golden Gophers need from their best player. Asher's hitting below 200 through that opening set, but since then, Again, she's slowly gotten more and more involved, more and more comfortable, and Rutgers defense has had some trouble. Deerstad plays a free ball. Shaftmaster goes for the dump set kill and nails it. And this is the type of a start to a set that Minnesota needed. Down 2-0, they're out to a 7-1 early lead. Yeah, trying to take some momentum back, and Shaftmaster again playing through the illness, making a nice play there. She does that better than most in the country. And then a service error. Another dump set kill for Chef Master. How about that one, a little no look over the shoulders. A little deja vu there if it works once. How about you do it again? Shaftmaster has had the assist this season, top 10 in the Big Ten, but there, doing it herself back to back. And she's got at least 50 kills per year, and she is one away from 50 on the season already. She has become more of an attacker now than ever before in her career, number five in the maroon and gold, averaging over a kill per set now on the season. That's such an extra element of offense when your setter can do that. This time she tees it up, and it is Grote who puts it down. Grote demolishes that, and one more point to make there 
on Shaftmaster. You know, she's got the freshest legs out of anyone. She did not play last night, and she played very limited points in the first two sets. So for two teams that are both on back-to-backs, that could matter as we get deeper into this contest. Nair over to Hartman, and that's her first error of the night. She had been perfect in terms of errors before that. Had 10 kills, no errors. And was hitting over 500. That time just came up short. Yeah, palmed it a bit too much. Sent it right into the middle of the net. Good job by Nair just to get a hand on that. And then Gurkovic sneaks it through. And the senior, this would be the mountaintop of her career if Rutgers could pull off this upset win tonight. And Gurkovic quiet so far in the set up until now. And Scarlet Knight's got to get her and Kinkilla active if they want to come back from this deficit. Williams with a good serve. Over to Wooker. And Minnesota's firing on all cylinders right now. Seven kills on nine swings in this set. And that's the latest for McKenna Wooker. That one goes right there to Wooker. And Minnesota for the game has now surpassed Rutgers in hitting percentage. Yeah, they're hitting 778 in that set. That'll, that'll certainly help. Service error is starting to pile up, though. That's the eighth in the match. But you get a look at Shaftmaster there. Eighth all time in assists at Minnesota. She's got over 3,300 of them. Another chance for Grote. Big bump. Nyer avoids the net. Humphrey gets it over, but here's another chance for Minnesota. It's Wooker again. Humphrey. And Williams nearly with a solo block. She was ready for it. Rutgers staying alive in this rally. And still going. Can Minnesota put it away? They can. Grote again. Man, what a battle right there. We saw Kinkilla go down to a knee, reach out, keep it alive, but the Gophers just too strong. Look at that sprawling play by the Aussie. But then Davis sets it up on a tee, and Grote finishes. How about that rotation right there for Rutgers? They had no natural libero on the floor as Madison Chitty comes back in. Kaitlin Schweighofer with a two sets to nothing lead. Trying some different things as Williams gets back into the kill column, her seventh of the night. Yeah, Ricky got off to a slow start in that opening set, but since then has really been captivating. Seen her with the blocks on defense, but there, a smash with the right hand. And she was such a big recruit coming out of high school. It was on the 2021 volleyballmagazine.com Fab 50, but it just never panned out for her at Penn State. Never got the playing time that She envisioned, but again, she's becoming a very fast star here at Rutgers. And Kinkello not expecting that one. I think Kinkello thought she was going to be the decoy. Williams was actually the decoy, and her and I are not on the same page. Yeah, a little miscommunication there. Williams almost made the signal like she wanted it back from Nyer, and uh, Kinkello did not expect it to be coming her way. Here's Kylie Murr. And an ace, fourth of the match for the Gophers. Standings right now and see that they had a preseason ranking of number seven. They were on paper expected to be that third team as there's an ace from Deerstad. They were looking to challenge Nebraska and Wisconsin for a Big Ten title this year. It hasn't worked out that way so far, but right now they've got to, as Keegan Cook said, live in the now. They've got to be in the now here and they've got to pull themselves out of this deficit. Not an easy task. This crowd has been fired up and Rutgers has played extremely efficient. Big swing from Grote. Williams goes for the back. Landfair blocked. Williams and Ken Killa combined for the third block of the match for RU. 
Yeah, Ricky Williams with a little push there to kind of get Minnesota off balance. They do get it across the net. And then Kinkilla right there puts up the two hands, gets the block and the point. Scarlet Knights back within five. Minnesota does have a comfortable lead here in this third set. Another chance for Williams, and that time her and Nye are not on the same page. Yeah, second time in this set we've seen Nyer have a miscommunication. Someone else in that front row, first it was Kinkilla, that time it's Williams, and Minnesota gets some momentum back after three straight points for RU. Now listen, Nyer has done a great job for most of tonight. She's already got a double-double, 28 assists, 11 digs. There's another service error, and she's quarterback this Rutgers offense. At one point, they were hitting over 300. They're still hitting 227, but to do that against one of the best teams in the country, she has done her job, and she has responded, really, I think, to the adversity that she faced just a week ago. Freshman Georgia Lee, who is inactive tonight, got some playing time, got her first career start just last week. So Alyssa Nyer had to face some adversity, but she has come back, and she has set up this offense very, very well tonight. And speaking of setups, good play right there to get Lydia Grote an opportunity for the Gophers keep things going. We look back at it again, and Grote gets it over that wall. That time, it was Hartman and Gurkovic. Hartman tries to go through the block. Walker down the line, and it's in. Boy, that is a pretty shot. That is McKenna Walker's patented shot. She's got got a chance to do something historic tonight. Error in the buildup on Minnesota. And yeah, now this is a different position for Minnesota. This is where Rutgers was the last two sets, bordering with like a six or so point lead. When you got to about 16, 17, question is Rutgers is able to hold twice. Can Minnesota do the same? Can Kella with an ace. Her 14th ace of the season, that is third on the team. And boy, that was a dipping dagger. Yeah, not easy to do that against an all Big Ten first teamer in Kylie Murr from last year. That's the Diggs in the conference entering play. Shaftmaster, there is that sneaky, deceptive left hand, and it gets her another kill. That's her third. Yeah, you just don't see it coming on defense, and Shaftmaster there, again, don't, even with the head, you don't really see where it's going. Don't even realize she's gonna play it over the net sometimes, and she was able to, again, catch Rutgers napping on defense. Here's Zanette Palabiak to serve. And the Istanbul Turkey native delivers a good one. Freshman, part of his very talented recruiting class. Nyer for Gurkovic. Nice dig from Grote. And the Golden Gophers have had everything going their way here in this third set. We look destined to go to a fourth. Yeah, this third set has really turned things around for the Gophers. Getting close to the Scarlet Knights and kills. Surpassed them easily in hitting percentage. Deerstad with the bump set. Hartman. Landfair got spun around on that one. And then flying in was Grote. Nice dig from Deerstad. Landfair plays a free one. Kerkovich wants it back. Minnesota was ready. Hartman goes cross court. Nice diving dig from Palabiak. And then Grode is on fire, her ninth kill. Yeah, it's really been that three headed monster of Wooker, Landfair, and Grote. Nobody else in the Gophers has more than three kills in the match. And those three really leading Minnesota on this run. Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year in Kylie Murr. 
and they are hoping to put together a team that is going to go to the Sweet 16 or even further this year as Hartman gets another kill. Hartman has had this magical weekend going for her. That's her 11th kill of the night after she had four last night. And as you mentioned, hadn't had a kill before that in almost a month. The three big additions to this Minnesota team this year in terms of the transfers. We mentioned Kylie Murr, one of the best defensive players in the country. We mentioned Lydia Grode, who came from Cal, where she spent her last three seasons before that. There's Wooker who keeps racking up the kills. And also, we haven't seen a ton of Phoebe Awalea tonight, but the 6'2 senior transferred from Loyola Marymount. And those three players, I asked Coach Keegan Cook about them, and he said they have all been excellent additions. They have helped take our team to a new level. Said he could not, could not be more pleased with what they've added to our team. And how about that? Wooker falling away, finds the middle. Yeah, if you let Wooker operate on that left side, doesn't matter if she's moving forward, back, staying in the same place, falling left, right. She can get a hand on the ball. She is going to punish you. And right there, finds the spot and puts Minnesota two points away from their first set victory of the night. And just to finish off the point for before, because I've asked head coach Caitlin Schweighofer about this as well. And I. Keegan Cook kind of gave a similar answer. He said, yeah, you know, you really don't know what you're getting year to year with the transfer portal. It is the wild, wild west. But as Humphrey adds a kill, he says the benefit of it is with players like Kylie Murr, with players like Lydia Grout, you know what you're getting in the portal with players that have great experience. Another look at the Humphrey kill. And yeah, that's what's Kind of crazy now with the portal, sometimes a bit of the roulette when you've got so many stacked Big Ten programs, a lot of movement, so you lose some pieces, you bring some in. Got to put yourself in the best position possible. Shaftmaster over to Wooker. Nice dig from Becca Williams. Free ball. This is Davis. And an error against Rutgers. So 10 set points now for the Gophers. So if you're Rutgers now, head coach Caitlin Schweighofer's got to be able to tell them, wipe the slate clean. They won the first two sets, but you got to win three to win the match. This is the Minnesota team that we're used to seeing. Kinkilla with another one. And Rutgers leading hitter has nine on the night. Yeah, I will say though, Kinkilla was much more active in those first two sets with Rutgers one. We saw that trend against Ohio State too. Rutgers more successful. They get Kinkilla in the action. Minnesota schemed better, kept the ball away from her in this third set. Minnesota hitting 517 this set. Landfair looking to cap it off, and instead it's gonna be almost blocked back. They somehow kept it alive. Williams collides with Williams, and then Kinkilla delivers her 10th kill of the night. Crazy point there, what a recovery for Minnesota, almost ending up by the scorer's table to keep it in play, but the Scarlet Knights, relentless. Here's Nyer. Landfair and the All-American reigning Big Ten Player of the Year gets Minnesota on the board. They've still got a long way to go, but the Golden Gophers, after falling down two sets to nothing. Fourth start begins with Taylor Humphrey. Now it's over to Landfair, who reaches with the left. And that second effort is going to go the way of Rutgers. Keegan Cook, let him cook. I mean, he just keeps <laughs> going with these five challenges, working out every time, and we're playing from behind again. These points matter. There was a couple challenges where we were early in the match where we were like, I don't know about that, but then Keegan Cook saying, hold up, let me cook. <laughs> Rutgers won those first two sets in part because they got off to such hot starts. So these first 10 points are gonna be critical. Chitty got her 14th dig of the night, and the Scarlet Knights finish it off. It's Anna Hartman, the freshman, already a career high tonight, and she's up to a dozen kills. What a night from Hartman, Pat. I mean, 
really incredible in how accurate she's been throughout this contest as a freshman. 30 kills on the season coming into tonight. She's got 12 in this match. Chitty with another dig, give her 15. Kinkello right down the line, bullseye. Rutgers really spreading the floor there. Chitty with the dig from the left side. They play it over to the front right, and that is Kinkilla's specialty. So Kinkilla had just one kill through the first two sets last night. Finished strong against Ohio State. Tonight she's got 11. And that's a perfect change up over the top from Landfair. 11 kills of her own. She's hitting over 350. Yeah, that's a perfectly placed ball. A little spiraling action. Drops it down, plays it short. Murr, line drive serve. Nyer to Ricky Williams. Kaboom! Ricky Williams up to nine. Yeah, that is detonation from Ricky Williams. Lined it up perfectly, timed it precisely and slams it home for the 4-2 lead. She had nine kills last night, she's got nine tonight. Back to Kinkilla. Shaftmaster, that's an illegal touch. Rutgers out to a 5-2 lead here in the fourth set. And exactly what the Scarlet Knights needed. Got off to that two sets to none lead. A little outclassed in the third set, but went five of the first seven points here, back in form. Shaftmaster to Grote, that's wide. And Minnesota looks a little bit under pressure. Keegan Cook takes a timeout. Yeah, quiet in the third set, but electric to start the fourth. Shaftmaster to Grote. There was a deflection on that one, so give Lydia Grote her 10th kill. Three Golden Gophers now in double figures. Now Lydia Grote continuing her strong performance in this game. Mentioned she was the top performer in the loss last night. Grote coming off 18 kills in the loss to Maryland, and that one is well long. And now you gotta think maybe in the back of the Golden Gophers players' heads when they go to serve, how aggressive do I wanna be? Every point right now is critical. And you're already at 11 service errors for the game compared to the Scarlet Knights, five. Kinkilla goes after Landfair, who now gets it back and drives that one home. A dozen for Landfair. Safe to say Landfair is finding her groove after a less than stellar performance last night. Perfectly set up there by Shaftmaster and Landfair charging forwards from the left. Gerkovich for Rutgers, nice dig from Grote. And then Wooker. At times it's been Landfair, at times it's been Grote, and at times it's been Wooker, and their last three points have come from those three players. Yeah, they're big three tonight, and Wooker this time getting in on the action. Rutgers tries to build the wall a little too off center. Back to Kinkello, who gets it through two sets of hands, and the redshirt sophomore from Melbourne, Australia, showing off the power. About a dozen now for Kinkilla there, attacking the block and taking advantage. And yeah, they got her out on an island. Minnesota was ready for it. They weren't thrown off by the decoy, but boy, that big right hand is playing its part. Here's Becca Williams, who's got a really good serve. Landfair had to reach back for that one. Gerkovich with the right hammer. And Pat again, all set up by Madison Chitty, getting down and dirty and getting it up for Gerkovich, who then finishes just inside the line. Tina Gerkovich now with seven kills on the night. She's hitting over 300 yet again. And her best season of her career continues to get better. Chitty with a big bump. Humphrey missed it.
Humphrey. Oh yeah, Taylor Humphrey with a big right hand. And she was shut down last year when these two played here inside Jersey Mike's Arena. Only four kills at negative 100. Minnesota did their homework and was able to snuff her out. Ricky Williams, that's on the line. That's another kill for the Houston native. Ricky Williams has really picked things up in the second half of this match. First two sets defensively was there, but the offense and the attacks have really come into play here. And Rutgers again going with this bigger lineup. They don't have a natural libero on the floor right now. Humphrey. Humphrey again. Push to Wooker. And that pops back. Landfair, those long arms just able to get it. Off the neck of Gurkovich. What power from Wooker. Now, Wooker has an absolute smash and goes through there. And now we're going to see Chitty come back in. When you're Rutgers, you can kind of afford it because, you know, Kinkela can get the digs, but weird to see that lineup. Yeah, well, I think that's an aggressive statement from Caitlin Tryhofer. Those times where they don't have a libero, don't have Chitty on the floor, I think she's sending the message, hey, we are going to be aggressive. We're going to play offensive volleyball. We're looking to win this match. We are not going to sit back on our heels. And Taylor Humphrey certainly not doing that. That is another big right hand. Second time this set, Taylor Humphrey has demolished one-on-one -on -one bounce towards the locker room. And Humphrey, 13 kills a night ago. A little quieter tonight with six, but all six have come in big situations. And that was such a big recruit for Caitlin Schweighoffer to get Taylor Humphrey, who is a Byron Center, Michigan native, which is right in the middle of the hotbed of Big Ten recruiting areas. Having to battle Michigan, Michigan State, Wisconsin, Minnesota for her services, and she decided to come to Piscataway. Down the line goes Wooker, and that time she missed. And you know, when you look at Rutgers' roster, she's not the only one that's coming from, you know, Big Ten hotbeds. You got a Pennsylvanian, a couple from Ohio, Nebraska. So the fact that the Scarlet Knights have been able to attract talent from these sort of mainstays in the Big Ten, big statement. And that's going to be an ace for Nyer, and Keegan Cook wants a timeout. And like you said, sort of that quarterback leading this way, the Scarlet Knights. That one's going to miss again from Minnesota. Boy, they just have not found their mark in sets one, two, and four. You thought maybe they had turned things around in the third set, but they are hitting under 100 here in this fourth set. And I really think, Pat, the fatigue has to really be brought up here. They were still kind of fresh in that third set. Now you're into your ninth set played in your last 26 hours. Alyssa Nyer said the movie she's watched the most in her lifetime, The Pursuit of Happiness. They're on the pursuit of history here tonight. Rutgers looking for their first ever win against a ranked team. Ricky Williams dug out by Shaftmaster. And too many touches. And I think a lot of folks in Minneapolis right now might be getting really frustrated watching this. This team, I think, at the end of the year still has all the pieces necessary to go to the NCAA tournament. They are still one of the best top 25 teams in the country, in my opinion. But, you know, again, they're setter, Shaftmaster. That's going to be a point for Minnesota that hits the Jumbotron all the way up top. That's how powerful that was from Grote. Shaftmaster didn't play last night. She's battling an illness, didn't play in the first set. And again, five-setter last night against Maryland, who was feisty, knocked them off of their defense, and then a determined Rutgers team tonight. These are these two-day, three-day windows in the Big Ten that could catch you slipping. Humphrey, block back, Erica Davis. Yeah, that's what you need if you're Minnesota. A couple opportunities in a row, get an error from the Scarlet Knights. And then right here, Humphrey trying to go over the top. 
but the wall in the right spot. That is the ninth block of the match for the Gophers. Nyer back to work, gets into Kinkilla, who hammers that one right down the line. How about that from Alyssa Kinkilla, getting active again here in this fourth set. And just the force that Rutgers is hitting the ball with on these kills, it's been Kinkilla, it's been Williams, it's been Hartman and Jerkovic all coming together. Quinn Rutgers on the brink of history. Kinkilla, the silent killer. And she's there for the dig. Williams tries to paw that one down. Nice dig from Shaftmaster. Back to the Aussie. And it's another. Tied for the match lead with 14 kills, and she's got 12 digs to go with it. It's a double-double. What a night we're seeing from Kinkilla. And right there, again, little back and forth action and comes through with the big point. And Rutgers has doubled up Minnesota here in this fourth set. This is a dominant performance right now in this fourth frame. Rutgers hitting 304, Minnesota hitting just 091. Keegan Cook maybe starting to run out of options. He's gonna go back to Phoebe Awalea in the middle. Landfair. Kinkilla again. Chitty wants Kinkilla. Minnesota putting up the shield right now, trying to stop the barrage of missiles. And then Kinkilla goes soft, and Minnesota somehow keeps it alive. Fourth swing of the point, finally puts it away. A thunderbolt. What a wild point, and it's a historic one too. Can kill a 500 career kills, and that one comes in a huge spot. What a recovery from Wooker and Murr, but can kill a persistent. The Scarlet Knights are six points away from their first ever ranked win in program history. And it's Grote who gets it through. A dozen kills for Lydia Grote. And that snaps a 3-0 run. Yeah, that time for Rutgers, a little miscommunication. Nyer had to kind of shove Kinkilla out of the way to get some space and then goes to the other side and Grote with a nice setup to finish. And Minnesota had not lost to an unranked team coming into this weekend. They're now in danger of doing it on back-to-back -back nights. The Terps got them in five last night. Kinkilla, did she avoid the net? She did, and it's her 16th kill. 501 now for her career. And after a night where Kinkilla was held to just eight kills against Ohio State, she has doubled that and has been the difference maker in this fourth set. Grote bringing everything she can right now. She is trying to put Minnesota on her back. She's gonna have to take a quick break. Oh boy, that big right hand from Lydia Road has been impressive. Yeah, she right now is keeping Minnesota in this game. Landfair has gone quiet in this fourth set, so it's been all about the transfer Grote. Nair to Gerkovic. The Serbian native has eight kills, and Rutgers is four points away. This crowd is fired up. They know the history that's on the line, and Gurkovic here places it perfectly to get the deflection off Minity. Before the match, Caitlin Schweighoffer, right when we got done speaking with her, said, hey, anything can happen. Nearly an ace, but a free ball. Are you back on the offensive? Kinkilla, another one, 17. Just an unbelievable night for the redshirt sophomore from Australia. She came here as a very quiet freshman, only played a couple of matches in the non-conference slate before a season-ending injury. 
Broke out last year. There's a big rejection from Gurkovich. Roofing that one back. How about the veteran getting involved now? Gurkovich making the nice play. And Rutgers is two points away. Minnesota is out of timeouts as well. They need a massive run at this point. Golden Gophers with a loss would drop to six and eight on the year. They would go to two and four in Big Ten play. And they would just be looking to get home and get rested up if they can't come back here in this one. Hartman. Walker. Hartman again, sneaks it through. And Rutgers has 12 match points to try to secure their first ever win over a ranked opponent in program history. Watching Hartman to the bench, she has been a huge contributor tonight. The freshman sneaking it through, and the Scarlet Knights one point away. Maybe their biggest win in program history. These are the kind of moments that Caitlin Schweighoffer was dreaming of when she came to Piscataway. Nearly do it with an ace. Rutgers for history. Wooker gets it through. 15 kills for McKenna Wooker. Yeah, Wooker has been instrumental tonight on a night where Landfair has kind of been in and out with how successful she has been. It's been about Wooker and Grote for the Gophers to try to keep them in this. There was a couple of years since Rutgers has joined the Big Ten where they failed to win a single conference match. They're looking for their first of the season and one of their biggest in program history. Wooker again. That's right in the corner. Boy, her pinpoint accuracy tonight has been on display. Yeah, just a sophomore, too. Looks like a seasoned veteran with the way she is able to place it on the line, but still Minnesota going to need a lot here. And that's going to go long, and that will do it. Kaitlyn Schweighoffer hugs her coaching staff, and for the first time in program history, the Rutgers Scarlet Knights have knocked off a ranked opponent.